Debated it all throughout the week. Devin White, probably the best LSU football player since Tyron Matthew to come through the program in the last decade. White, kind enough to join us here on Off the Bench as he's finishing up this morning at the Barber and finished up the semester yesterday. Good morning, man. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing good. How about yourself? Doing good. First and foremost, tell me about getting the uh, the semester down yesterday. I know you took your your last final exam of uh, of the semester yesterday. How good does that feel? Oh, it felt great walking out of that last test, which was theology, knowing that I had studied well for it and I was prepared for it, and I got through it within 30 minutes, and it was wow. like 50 some 60 questions. So that was a great feeling. So congratulations to you, man, on on finishing up the uh, the academic year. And then for this this last two-year run of defensive football that you've played for LSU has been just, just phenomenal. Um, when you decided to make the move to linebacker, did you think that you could be this good? Yeah, I figured that I'd be way better at, at linebacker than running back, even though I felt like I could have been great at um, running back as well. So the whole time I was getting recruited, I was telling Coach Miles and Coach Frank that I, I don't want to play running back. But, you know, Coach Frank, uh, you know, he felt like he needed to be the one to recruit me from LSU or he don't feel like, feel like I would have came. But I always knew that I was destined to be a great linebacker. 115 tackles this season, 12 tackles for loss. Um, White, only the seventh player in LSU history to record 100 tackles in back-to-back -back seasons. Uh, what's it like preparing for, for this, this bowl game against Central Florida? Uh, I think it'll be fun. You know, I think they dynamic in a lot of ways, but I think they're a team that I can make a numerous amount of plays against because they do so much. And, you know, as a linebacker, you know, if they run the ball a lot, I mean, there's a lot of tackles for me. And then if they got quick passing game, I mean, that's a lot of plays that I can make in the underneath game as well. So uh, I think it'll be fun. I'm just, you know, ready to really start competing against my brothers again, you know, because we, we're going to be like a spring practice. We'll be going against each other until it's time for, like, bowl prep in Arizona. It didn't seem like it was a difficult decision for you, but everybody knows what future potentially is out there for you. Was it, was it a tough choice to decide to play in this game? No, it wasn't a choice a tough choice at all, easily because, like, everybody think I'm, like, going to the NFL, but I'm really all the way in at LSU, and I haven't even started making a decision yet. So if, if I was to say I wasn't playing, then that means I made a decision. But, you know, I, I haven't even uh, started making a decision with my family because I want to finish the season, and, you know, I want to end on a good note, and then I want to start, you know, uh, talking to my family to make a decision. But right now we were focused on passing all your finals and getting ready for the bowl prep. And and we're talking to Devin White here on Off the Bench, 104.5, 100.3, ESPN. And, uh, Devin, I think that that kind of focus is indicative of the leadership that you've displayed at LSU. And as good as you've been on the field, to me, just outside looking in, that's been the most impressive part. It's been the leadership, the intangibles. The moment I keep going back to was last season, and it was the rock bottom moment. It, it was losing that Troy game. And you kind of talk about how guys got to be more accountable, how they got to get in the playbook more. Take us behind the scenes. What happened at that moment? What did you say to those players? Because it really seemed like from that moment on, things have turned around for this team, even going into this year. Yeah, I just basically told them, like, that, that one game, it was like a major game that really made us look real bad, and that's not a feeling that we really enjoyed it. You know, we don't want that to happen anymore. So in order for that not to happen, we need to step up as leaders and step up as young men and take responsibility of our own actions, you know, and don't blame nobody, don't point the fingers. Because at the end of the day, if we hold ourselves accountable, we could be way better than what we were last year. So, you know, I just push everybody to just, you know, do their job. And if you got 11 people on both sides of the ball doing their job, then, you know, the sky's the limit. As you've seen this year, you know, we had a few hiccups, but, you know, I feel like we played some good ball, and I feel like we was getting better and better each time we stepped out there on the field. Yeah, and look, definitely exceeded expectations. Now, um, you mentioned some hiccups, the, the the toughest one, one of the worst beats I've ever seen, that A&M game. Um, that is a brutal game to go through and, and then try to come back from, uh, and especially when you got a break, so you got to kind of live with that taste in your mouth. What's been your message to the team trying to get the guys – to kind of move on from something that is so frustrating. I mean, as a fan, I sit here, I still think about the game, and I immediately become frustrated. So you know as a player it's a million times worse. How are you kind of trying to get the team focused on the task ahead instead of looking behind? Basically just preaching to them how good UCF is. You know, if 
if we go in there with our hands down, you know, they're going to embarrass us. And, you know, just like the trail laws, we don't want to get embarrassed, especially by, like, UCL because, you know, I feel like, you know, um, we're going to be the best team that they play, that they played in a two-year span of going to undefeated. So, I know we, I know they're going to give us their best shot, but we got to, you know, get ready to take whatever they throw at us and, you know, knock it out the park and, and dominate them. Devin, what was it like getting to ride Daisy May in Death Valley? Oh, uh, it, it was the best experience of my life. <laughs> like, for real. For real. Like, yeah, above above all the crazy, you know, playing in front of 100,000 people, making plays, that, that that's up there as the best? Yeah, it, it's better than, I ain't gonna lie, it's better than playing in front of all the fans. Like, I wish all the fans could have been in there cheering me on as I was riding around. But, I mean, it just felt like, I don't know, I guess it felt like heart's heaven. Like, everything was just... Force heaven. Moved. It, it, just, it just went well, you know, while I was riding. I made a couple of laps. I went down the middle. I just I just enjoyed it, man. It was like a great feeling, like, you know, having something I love in, in something I love. So, I mean, that was, that was a great feeling. And, you know, I'm glad I got it on video because I don't think nobody in the history will ever get to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, when, when did you get when, – when did you learn about your love of horses, Devin? When, when did that come about? Uh, basically, when I was like five years old, and I moved from uh, my small town of Spring Hill, Cullen, Louisiana, 15 minutes down the road to Kaiser Valley, Louisiana, when my mom remarried, when my mom married my stepdad. And, you know, down the street, I had some cousins who had horses. And, you know, uh, a guy named Dupree Robinson, he like three years older than me, but, you know, I was bigger, so I was able to hang out with him. He was mm. probably eight years old. <laughs> I was five. And he grew up around horses his whole life from a baby because that's, Everybody in his family, that's all they did. And, you know, he came and got me one day, and he was like, you know, uh, let's ride. You know, he taught me how to ride. And then I remember we didn't have our own horses at that young of age, and we couldn't just go get them and ride by ourselves. So we used to jump on hay like a big round roll of hay and act like we was riding. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, was a, it was the funniest times of my, of my life growing up because that just showed you how much we love to be on a horse that we – Imagine, you know, that we was on a, a horse, but we were really on a round roll of hay, and we were just right. kicking it and acting like we was riding. But, you know, them some of the best memories that I'll never forget, you know, just the little things like that. And then when I was able to get my own horse, my, my love grew more and more because you had to take care of it. Yeah. And, you know, just like taking care of a kid, you know, you you know it makes you love it even more and cherish it even more because it's a responsibility. Do you think – do so? so football, eventually the end of football comes for everyone, right? For someone of yeah. your skill level, like who knows how long that could be away. That could be over a decade away. Um, do do all roads for you though? Do all roads end in horses? Do you think eventually? Um, I, I know when I finish um, playing football, I know I want to talk. I want to talk about the great sport. You know, the greatest sport ever. Like, so I want to like go on TV. Okay. And, you know, kind of talk about it like Ryan Clark do. Yeah. And then uh, I want to get. I'm gonna get into some type of horse business. Like, I don't know if it's gonna be with, like the Kentucky Derby or. Just having my own stables and you know doing something, but I want to make sure I'm doing something with horses. I want to actually do uh, like therapeutic horses too for kids, you know, that that have like uh, certain mental problems because horses are very calm. And you know, I've seen a lot of programs where they kind of bring horses around the kids, and it's kind of a relief for them. So I want to do a lot of things with horses. I just want to you know show people that they are more than you know just for riding and stuff. Like you can get a lot out of Daisy May Stables. I already see it. Down the line, yeah, D White Stables, dude. You and uh, you and um, Jake Delhomme need yeah, to hook up. Jake right. Delhomme's big in right. the horse game. Another Louisiana football legend. Devin White, a great representative of LSU, the state of Louisiana, getting prepared for the bowl game, the Fiesta Bowl versus Central Florida. You can hit him on Twitter at Devin White underscore forty. All right, you're the best linebacker in college football, man. It could have been argued you were the best linebacker in college football a season ago. Tell me about the guys behind you, the future of LSU. How good's Baskerville? How good's Damone Clark? Uh, those two guys are extremely great. I'm, I mean, Damone Clark, like his work ethic is second to none. You know, uh, he was he he another me all over again. You know, but he his own person. But just saying, as far as his work ethic and the work I put in, I know how it got me to where I'm at. You know, he do the same thing. Like he always text me, "What time are you lifting today? I'm gonna make sure I come in and lift with you because I know you're gonna make me better." Like mm. he's hungry. Like he got what I got. And then Michael Baskerville, he's just you know so God gifting athletic like you know he come from where i'm come from you know the, the 318 so he's yeah. going to be able to put on the show in the bowl game because jacob got to sit out the first half and you know michael's only a freshman and he still got a lot to learn but when we throw him in the fire i think he do a great job and then you still got patrick queen and jacob phillips 
those guys and, you know, everybody see what they can do week in and week out. And, you know, this is their first year on the field, so they got the jitters out of them. So next year they're just going to get better and better every time they get on because they're going to be used to it and they're going to know what to expect. So many highlights over the last three years, man. For me, it's you as a freshman rocking 24 on the kickoff team, coming down and tackling the kickoff uh, returner for Ole Miss and then doing the Land Shark celebration into the student section. Still gives me chills to this day. You got a favorite highlight over the last three years? Uh, I think my favorite highlight over the last few years would be the goal line. Like, we had Bama on the one-yard line. I was a freshman. Yeah. And, you know, I, I shot a gap. And I made a play, and I kind of ran the guy all the way to the back of the end zone. And then I just went, ran straight to the crowd right there and just started throwing my hands up. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> you know, it was, it was a big game. I was a young player. And it, and it was just it was just crazy to see, you know, uh, myself making plays against the number one team in the country at the time. And I think they went on to win that championship that year. Or they probably lost, and then they won it the next year. But that, that was a great moment. Just, that just let me know, like, hey, you deserve to be out here with these great players. You know, so – Man, I, I never forget that experience. You know, I got that picture uh, hung up at my mom's house because I mean it was a it was a great uh, moment in the in the best stadium in the world, and the stadium was filled. So yeah. that was probably my best moment of uh, playing for the LSU Tigers. Devin, if I put three barrels out there in Death Valley, who's winning the race, you or Kendall Beckwith? Barrel competition. Uh, his horse kind of his horses are kind of made for that, but my horse is like. Lightning, so I'm gonna say my horse. <laughs> I got videos to prove like she's one of the fastest horses around right now. Is he faster so, than you? Yeah, she's pretty <laughs> fast. Uh, Devin, what what did it feel like this year getting to a New Year's Six Bowl? Kind of because when, when you commit to LSU, these are the type of bowl games you expect to be playing, and it didn't happen maybe as soon as you wanted. But now y'all are here. What does that feel like? Uh, I feel like. Um, you know, we getting started, so what's going to be even greater in the future? You know, I feel like this was just a stepping stone, and, you know, I wish it was way better than what it was, but I can't complain. You know, I'm just uh, thankful that we are in the New Year's Six Bowl because I know uh, that Texas and them game didn't go like we wanted it because we could have been, even in, you know, in another bowl, probably like the um, bowl in Atlanta. But, I mean, I'm blessed to be in the um, – Fiesta Bowl, you know, it's a great bowl. I looked at the hotels and stuff, everything around that night, and I'm ready to get there and just prepare and get on that field and dominate, do what I do, what I do all the time is just dominate because I feel like I'm even better since that last game because I've been training even harder since we didn't we haven't had a game, so I feel like I done got a little stronger. And I'm ready to go. That's scary. 17 tackles last time out. <laughs> Personal best for Devin White. All right, you mentioned all the interest, everything, all the attention for you on Central Florida and the Fiesta Bowl. At what point do you start to decide on your future? Uh, when uh, After we win the game, Yeah. because I'm very confident that, you know, I'm, we're about to prepare so hard that we're going we gonna to win this game. So after we win the game, um, I'm going to really go, I don't know, I might give it a week or so because I'm not in a rush. I'm not. I'm I'm happy where I'm at. You know, I love uh, the state of Louisiana. I love all my coaches, all my friends and family around here. I love my teammates. So I'm not in a rush. It's just I need to talk to whoever I need to talk to. I need to ask Coach O what I need to look, you know, look forward into, like, my pros and my cons. Because at the end of the day, you know, I'm not out. I'm still at LSU, and it, it'll be an easy decision once, you know, because I had the right people around me to help me make it. So it's not like I'm just some 20-year-old kid making – his decision by itself. Like, I got a lot of uh, great people around me that's going to help me make it. D. White, it's been fun to watch you play the last three years, man. Congratulations. Best of luck on your decision and all the awards that you got, man. Thanks for the time this morning. All right. Thank you. Got all right. Off thanks, the bench. Man.